Okay, so this video is maybe a bit nerdy, but it also can show you how to use the grid to solve certain problems, to find some workarounds, to do some math inside of the grid. And it maybe also shows some shortcomings of the devices. So for this example, I want to use Compressor Plus. And like most compressors on the market, it uses milliseconds for attack time and release time. And this is okay, but sometimes you want to use something like beats, like like 160 note, 18 note, 1 fourth note as a release time here, right? Instead of milliseconds. Uh, and we have here auto timing, which kind of does something like this in the background, but it's not represented inside of the GUI. So you don't know what it's calculating in the background. You can maybe see it inside of the graph. You can maybe hear it, but it's not represented as a number, right? So you don't know what's what's happening. So we want to use the grid actually here to calculate uh, the milliseconds um, or some time-based uh, yeah, for, for time-based units. So let's say we want to change it to BPM. Um, the release time has to change, right? So if I show you this here in a, in a drawing, so let's say you have, um, I don't know, a kick drum and then you have a snare drum and then you have a, a kick drum again, right? So the distance here between the kick drum and the snare drum is, uh, of course, we can measure this in milliseconds, right? But it's also exactly maybe one uh, 16 note, right? So when you change the BPM, milliseconds change because um, this one gets closer to the, to the previous sound, right? So the snare drum is closer to the kick drum because you play it faster. So the milliseconds change, but one 16 note is always the same. So when you dial in one 16 note, milliseconds basically change in the background. So this is the benefit of having basically a time-based um, release time. You dial in one 16 note and it stays basically always one 16 note. And if you change the BPM, um, it's changed in the background accordingly. Um, so this is basically uh, what we are trying to achieve. And inside of the grid, there's actually no way to calculate um, something based on the BPM. So let's say we use here an FX grid. Um, put this in and we use here the compressor plus inside of post FX. Of course, we want to because we want to modulate the release time. So in the grid, we just pass the audio through the device itself. And then we want to cal calculate based on the BPM. So there's no module inside of grid that gives you just a number of 131 BPM. We can just use here maybe a constant and just type it in manually, right? Something like this. And then we do some calculations with this. This is possible and it's probably just the easiest way. Uh, but when you change the BPM setting, right? which is actually not what you do all the time. So it's a constructed problem. You usually don't change the BBM in your project all the time. So it's maybe something you do in the beginning once or twice and that's it. So you're completely fine with just using constant and then calculating the um, time-based units with this. Uh, but you know, I want to construct a problem yet just to have to make a video. Um, so my idea for this was instead of using here um, the constant, I'm using the transport. So the transport here gives out more or less a ramp signal. Maybe let's go too fast. So you can see we have here now a ramp signal going from zero to one. And we now need to kind of calculate the distance between zero and one. So how long is this actually in milliseconds? Because this ramp signal changes when I change here. Um, when I change the PPM, you can see now it's the ramp signal is much more steeper and the distance between zero and one is much shorter, which is exactly what we need. So how do we actually calculate the distance between zero and one? That's not an easy task because inside of the grid, there's no module that does something like this, where you can measure milliseconds. So we have to hack around this problem. And my idea for this was, let's actually convert this into a sound. 
we take this ramp signal, which is a phase signal, and just put this into the sign lookup module here, which takes in a phase. You can see here it's in purple, right? So we can take the signal into the sign and generate a sound. The problem now is that the sound is very low in frequency, right? We put here this to pitch, or maybe fast, slow. So it's almost like an LFO, it's not audible. It's maybe, I don't know, three hertz or two hertz, right? So my idea was to actually measure this frequency by using zero crossings, which is just a rough pitch estimator, right? It gives you basically the pitch from this. And when we take here readout uh, to see, maybe put this to hertz here, you can see it does nothing. It doesn't give you any value because the zero crossings only operates between 20 hertz and 5 kilohertz. So this pitch is way too low, okay? So the next idea was, okay, when this pitch is too low, why not just pitch it up, right? So we use here a multiply. And we multiply the, the phase signal here by a constant. And the constant is just um, some random value that's just high enough that gives you um, a decent pitch here out of the zero crossings module. So I can see here it's, you can change the constant, but the pitch is kind of the same, roughly the same. Um, so we have 50, 54 hertz here, which is still low, so maybe get higher. So I think 120 hertz is just a nice middle ground between 20 hertz and 5 kilo, 5 kilohertz. So now the zero crossings module has to measure a pitch of a very pure sine wave, which should be fairly easy for the zero crossings module. And we get here a value of C2 around 130 hertz. So now we get basically into the range of a time-based measurement. We have Hertz because Hertz is actually, um, uh, it's per second. So one Hertz is basically one event or one cycle per second. So we have here 130 events, 130 zero crossings per cycle. And we can actually calculate milliseconds from this, believe it or not. So let's remove this here. Let's go there. So um, from this state here, we can now use actually one of the new modules called uh, pitch to hertz, right? So now we get an, instead of having here uh, just to, to use this readout to get actually the hertz, now we get this as a number. So we can switch this here to number and then go in here and you can see we have now here 130 hertz more or less. It's actually different than this. Let me see. No, it's 129. It's the same thing, yeah. So now we get basically 130 hertz here as a number, and we can calculate now with this number. But the problem is it's not the, the right number because we multiplied here the sign um, or the, um, the frequency of the sign by 250 or let's say 260 times, right? So this is not the right number. So what we have to do now is basically to bring it down again. So we divide this number by the same amount. So all we do basically here with this multiplication and this division is basically, um, yeah, it's basically just a way to actually make zero crossings work correctly. That's why we use a multiplication in this. If actually zero crossings would um, calculate um, lower frequencies, we don't need to do this, these, these, these two steps. It's just so we can calculate here or get the pitch from the signal. So now we get here basically, um, yeah, we get the hertz or the, um, um, yeah, the time-based hertz of one, or well, that's actually 16, uh, 16, 16 notes, maybe go down here. So this is one 16 note, okay? So we have uh, uh, eight hertz, okay? So this is here, time, 
base hertz. Um, yeah, this is basically what we get as hertz uh, value here. Um, so when we speed this up, you can see hertz goes up. And if you go down to 100 here, maybe. Yeah, 100 gives you basically 6 hertz. Then you can say this is one eight node. This gives you 3 hertz. Um, so you can already calculate time based on the BPM um, how many hertz basically one eight node is. So all we have to do now is basically convert hertz to milliseconds. And uh, that's not really, really hard because we know already um, one hertz is basically one cycle per second. So we can take one second and divide it by this number, right? And we can do this by using a recipro reciprocal. That's how it's called. Uh, reciprocal does basically here uses a one and divides it by the incoming number, right? So we do uh, one divided by this number. And then we get basically here a time base more or less in seconds. So we have 0 0.2 seconds. That's the distance between 0 and 1. That's exactly the time span of 116 node or 18 node, sorry. So 18 node is, yeah, uh, 0 0.3. I can't read it really here. It's, it's um, flashing. It's flickering. <laughs> So uh, then to calculate actually the milliseconds from this, we can use a constant. And here we type in 1000, because 1000 milliseconds is one second. And then we multiply this here. So after all this, we have more or less now here the number as an integer for milliseconds. So how do we get this number now to modulate actually here something uh, on the release? Um, yeah, no. Also, so how do we get from there to this? And um, my idea was to actually see. So we start here with zero milliseconds and the uh, maximum value is 2.20 uh, seconds. So what we can do is we can use a constant here and type in the maximum number, uh, which is 20, 22, um, uh, 2200 milliseconds, right? This is the, the maximum number. Let's call this here. Let's target. And then we use again reciprocal because we want to modulate here. So when you use a modulator, something like this, right? And you modulate here the release time. Um, uh, this value is basically, this is zero and this is one, right? So zero, one. So we want to bring this integer, which is, which is over or exceeds one. It's actually 300 here. Uh, so we want to bring this down between zero and one, right? So we use here the max target. Uh, we use one, which is the maximum value of this uh, modulation amount here, and divide it by this maximum target here, which is 20, uh, 2200. Um, okay, so then we have to multiply this by the time base here in milliseconds. Oh, we have to also rename this here time base in milliseconds um, okay so then we get actually check this here um, then we get here the target mod scale so this is basically here the number or uh, the modul modulation value that you need to modulate here the release time so we can go in here and just modulate this right so you can see um, here it modulates just a tiny bit and if we change the BPM setting you can see how the modulation goes down right so of course if you have a low low BPM the distance between the beats or the distance between the kick drum and the snare drum is bigger so we need to, a longer release time um, so it kind of works but now there's a different problem 
um, the release time is actually not linear. So this is linear here, right? Um, so we can click on this and you can hover over here and you can see down here in the info bar, right? In the info box, I don't know how it's called. Um, you can actually see the modulated value there. The release time is actually on 0, 0.0 milliseconds and the modulated value is uh, 2 milliseconds, um, which is probably not right um, because we need to have 200 milliseconds here, right? So the problem here is that this is actually uh, logarithmic. So we go onto this modulator here and switch this from linear to logarithmic. So now you can see here the modulation value jumps up here. So now when we hover over this, you can see the release time is now 230 milliseconds. Uh, maybe you have to put in uh, something like a lag on there. Maybe not lag. Um, maybe a low pass or maybe if I bring down here this value, then it's it's probably, yeah, it's 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 not jittering that much anymore okay so you can see now here the value a bit clearer oh, it's too yeah we have to keep it this way yeah okay that that's how it works um, so now you can see down here, basically, um, we have the right millisecond value down there as a modulation target as here, right? So this is time-based MS, and then it's modulated or mapped to the release time here to the right milliseconds. And this works great on Compressor Plus because it actually starts with zero milliseconds. If you use the, the old compressor here, it's a bit harder because you have to introduce maybe an offset because it only goes down to 38 milliseconds. That's where it starts and it goes up to 1.41 second for some reason. Um, so you have to account for that. Maybe you have to bring in a bias and play around with offsets and so on. Um, but anyway, I just want to give you an example how you can do something like this in the grid here. And it's it's a you know it's a happy hacky approach. It's not something like I said. It's not practical. It's not something you want to do, but you can do it. So you can work around a lot of things inside of the grid, even though it's a bit hacky. And sometimes it's fun. It's a challenge to do this kind of stuff, right? And um, like in this example here, it kind of works. So now you can change your basically the BPM. You can see the release time is changing. Um, oh, I can't go down here. Maybe you have to bring up the, yeah, you have to go up here with the higher settings. So it's, maybe I go down here to a lower value. So you have to find a sweet spot here for the constant, uh, for your BPMs. Uh, because the zero crossings module only works in a certain range very well. It's not like, you know, it's a perfect module. It's, um, yeah, it's a bit hacky. But you can see it kind of works. We can change release time here with the BPM. And we can also set in here, let's say, um, 116 node, 1 fourth node, right? Maybe one bar or... So you, so you can accordingly change this here. This is not right. 32, we actually have to go up here with this. Um, so yeah, you can do time-based things inside of the grid. You can calculate it on the fly based on the BPM using here the transport and then extracting um, this ramp value and convert it into a sound and then measure the sound of the zero crossings get the pitch from it convert the pitch to hertz and then calculate with hertz and you know um, get the milliseconds from that for 160 node 18 node and so on so it's possible you can do it in the grid it's it's a it's a hacky way but it works and i found it the fun way of doing this kind of uh, challenge inside of the grid and i want to show it to you um, like I said, it's not a practical approach. It's not something you want to do. And to show you that this kind of works, um, I have also on my on my website here, 
have here, let's say, go to search. I've made a while ago some kind of BPM to millisecond calculator here in JavaScript. So we have 163 BPM. And we have for one eight node, we have 184 milliseconds. So this is one eight node here. You can see we have 185 milliseconds. So it's roughly, it matches. Uh, 160 node is 92. Mm, 160 node is 92. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's roughly the same. So it kind of matches. So we can do this stuff inside of the grid with the zero crossings. It kind of works. Um, it's maybe a few milliseconds off, but it's not a, a big problem in my, in my opinion. Would be great to have actually here a time-based release uh, unit or for the release time, a unit, you know, 160 node, one fourth node and so on. Or maybe the auto timing showing the correct um, result of the calculations. Uh, would be nice to have, in my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have some questions, of course, also uh, leave a like, leave a subscription. And I also put this uh, preset here down in the description for, uh, for free. So you can download it and have some fun with it. Okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.